Hey everyone, it's Katrina Sawa here today, and I wanted to uh, talk to you today about how to jumpstart your business, your marketing, your life, and more. So many people come to me and say, well, isn't jumpstart your biz just for new business owners? And I say, no, no, it's not. I say everybody in any level of business needs a jumpstart one way or the other. So first and foremost, whether you are just starting out, of course, you're going to need a jumpstart in many different areas. You're going to need to know how to get your business up online. You're going to need to know how, what you need as far as a website or uh, proof of concept. You're going to need some programs, products, services, pricing, packaging. You're going to need a little bit more confidence on talking about what you do and how much it is and asking for people to uh, sign up with you, right? You're going to probably need to do a little bit of networking, possibly speaking, figure out social media. That's all the stuff you might need in the regular jumpstart of a newer business in the first three years or so. Um, if you are have been in business for five or 10 years, something like that, a lot of times you're doing pretty well. I don't find that most people in that situation are usually making six figures yet, however. So it could be that we need to jumpstart your revenues and your profits and get you over that six figure hump. If you're already in the six figures, then we need to probably streamline things and systematize or automate things more or even delegate because you're probably still doing too much in your business and we need to give you some more freedom, some more time back, right? But sometimes we're scared at that level to hire people when we're not making just all the money we need yet, right? And so it's a little balance between uh, hiring more, investing more in the business so that we can really level it up and grow big. And then the third bucket is someone who's been in business for a long, long time, like myself, 21 years in business now this summer. Um, I'm so excited and proud that I've been able to sustain a business doing what I love for this long, it's really amazing. But I'm still hiring coaches and mentors and listening to speakers and going to workshops because there's always more to learn. There's always more a next level for my own self-development as well as my personal development. So I think there's always a time to jumpstart. In this stage in my business, now I kind of do spot coaching, what I say, spot coaching. But like the other day, I was listening to somebody about tech text message marketing, right? I've never implemented a text message campaign before. And yes, you do need to get opt-ins for that. You can't just text people at random. And why would you do that unless you have an actual text message strategy, right? So I haven't done it in the past because I haven't invested the time to really develop a text message strategy. So that's like an advanced thing. It could be actually for the newbies too, but there's there's different levels of business. There's different levels of your at in your confidence, in your commitment to your business, right? In our lives, sometimes we are not building it too big or we take the summers off because we don't need to make a lot of money. Maybe we have a significant other who brings in a lot of money. And so the money isn't as urgent. Uh, there's others of us who are, are the single own, you know, single family operated person bringing in only the, the all the money. I can't even talk right now. Um, and, <laughs> and our revenue, you know, our, our livelihood depends on our revenue. And so there's people at all stages in business. And so it just depends on where you are, what your goals are today. And they could change next year. They could change in three years. So I think you always have to be in evolution for of you and your business. And what you want might change as well. I know I can tell you from experience when I first started my business back in 2002, uh, first of all, you guys have it easy because you get to do stuff online. You can reach people internationally now with Zoom and social media, but we didn't have it that easy back then. We barely had websites. Most people were just starting to do email marketing in 2002. It was mostly just local networking and local marketing. And I was working the, you know, I would work the room at a chamber, a commerce event. Uh, I actually joined four chambers and a women's group, women's business group. And I was in BNI, which is, you know, Know, the referral agency. So I was doing all of that every single month constantly to grow my business because that was the only way I knew the local marketing. Um, but 
when I started, I was married to my starter husband, uh, who was a great guy. We met doing door-to-door sales. Yep, I did door-to-door sales, knocking on residential and commercial uh, doors to try to sell stuff to them. And uh, we we met there. But when uh, we worked uh, jobs after that, because we had left that company and we worked jobs, uh, actually, my first husband was Canadian and he didn't even have the right to work in the U.S. He was kind of working under the table. So we had to get married in order for him to get a J-O-B, right? And and I had to, so, so we did that, although we were going to get married anyways. I know, like, I know you're looking at me like that. So yeah, we got married early so that he could get a job. So I wasn't the only one supporting the household. Um, but about six years into the marriage, I just, I found the world of entrepreneurialism. I'd always thought I would be an entrepreneur, but I didn't know what that looked like or what kind of business that would be. Uh, and so I finally left my last corporate job and um, I just didn't look back. I said, well, I've been helping small business owners. I'd been in advertising sales and uh, I'd been in all kinds of marketing positions in the local area. So I knew a lot of people in the local area and I knew the small businesses needed help. But when I launched my own business, I kept learning new things, right? So I would go to workshops and I would go to chamber events and I would meet all these people that were so positive and, and excited about growing their business. I'd come back to my significant other at the time and tell him all the things I wanted to do and how excited I was and what else I needed to learn and invest in and do. I needed a website. I needed workshops. I needed a mentor. And, you know, he was like, well, we don't have the money for that right? You got to go make some more money and then you can do that. And I said, well, but how does that work? I don't know how to make all the money in this kind of a business. I've never had this before. It's always easier to sell somebody else, right? Than sell ourselves. So he wasn't very supportive of the things I needed to do. And this is probably one of the biggest eye-opening things that I didn't realize at the time, but I see it everywhere now. I see so many people, uh, women especially, who are in relationships with their significant other not being 100% supportive. And so that negativity and unsupportiveness, at, whether it's uh, brutally you know, rude and mean, or if it's just subtly, some unconscious uh, unsupportive behaviors and language, it can really fester into your entrepreneurial energy. And I'm telling you, uh, it is so important to not only work on what you need to do to grow the business and jumpstart the revenues and the profits and the team and the marketing, but you have to pay attention to what's going on in your personal life, in your love life, with significant others, with family members. I also had a family member, my dad at the time, who would be like, I'm so proud of you, but then why haven't you lost the weight? Or I'm so proud of you for doing your own business, but why haven't you fixed your crooked teeth yet? Right? I'm like, well, because it wasn't a priority. That's why. Right. And, and so I would, I had these negative people in my lives and I, and it was, it was really hard to go out and put on a really smiley face at the local networking or a speaking gig or in front of a client to, you know, really be confident about what I was doing when there was people behind me that were kind of pulling me down. And so that's really the first lesson I had to learn was to really not settle for having those kinds of relationships. I did leave the marriage in 2005. My dad died actually in 2007. And then that's when I was really free to not have any negativity in my life. And I could choose who I wanted to hang out with and who I wanted to be with and who I wanted to date, etc. Right. And it was, that was the first lesson. The first lesson is really who, you know, who are you hanging around with? And how do you need to be in order to be with the right people that are going to be 100% supportive with you? And I know this is a business talk and making more money, but I'm telling you, if you're ignoring that side of your life, the love side of your life, it's a big mistake because it will definitely fester maybe this year, maybe next year, maybe five years from now but it's going to hold you back on some level. So that's really the first thing I wanted to share today was really look at your, the love side of your life. Um, And then of course we have to love ourselves too, right? We have to value ourselves. We have to know that we are worth it. 
We have to know that we are so flipping awesome at what we do that everyone should hire us who needs this kind of a thing, right? So whether you're a professional organizer or you're a life coach or you have some kind of product program or service that somebody needs, you need to know that you are amazing and that you and the 100% of the right people should pick you, right? And But sometimes I know we feel like the best kept secret. I have this problem too. Trust me. I feel like I'm all over the place. I have lots of followers. I have lots of friends all over the United States and, and different countries. I have a pretty big circle of people who know who I am, but I still feel like the best kept secret. Why? Because I'm not one of those flashy marketers. I know I teach marketing and I'm really good at sales and the wording of things, but I honestly, I don't necessarily feel like the best marketer on the planet. And I know there's so many people out there that have way better marketing than me and they're making more money or they're getting the clients that really I think should come to me over to them, right? And why is that? So how do we get better at that marketing and positioning and putting ourselves out there so that more people flock to us, right? And so that's, I mean, that's something I've been working on forever. And again, 21 years in business, I'm still working on this, right? We're, it's never perfect. We're never the perfect person. We're never, you know, probably 100% confident. I'm like 98% confident in everything that I do, but there's always those days, right? And I know that there's probably those of you out there doing the same thing. And I just hate to see that. It breaks my heart. I want you to like fully be happy and in love with yourself and what you're doing and know that you're worth it and know that you're extremely valuable enough so that you charge more. Like you, you can push the limits on your rates. People ask me all the time, Katrina, what should I charge for this program? What should I charge for that product? And I'm like, as much as you can say without stuttering is what you should charge. Because when you stutter, you lose the sale, right? But why not push it? There's billions of people on the planet and all each of us need is like this many people. We need this many people to make a half a million dollars a year, really. So like what are, we just have to be, we have to be ourselves. We have to make sure we have, surround ourselves with really positive, uplifting cheerleader type of friends and family and associates, right? and colleagues, we have to make sure that we're getting out in front of enough people. So how do you do that? How do you get in front of enough people every month, right? So I used to say, you know, you have to get in front of a thousand new people every month for most of us, most of us, because that means that maybe a couple handfuls of them will pay attention and maybe come through our sales or marketing funnel, right? Honestly, out of a thousand people that might pass across your social media posts or hear you on a podcast or see you on a call like this or network with you in some way online or offline out of a thousand people that could potentially see you every month you still may only get a couple handfuls who actually do something about it which is really sad it's really sad that it has to be like that but there's too much noise out there there's way too much noise and almost all of us have about seven different inboxes to check from our in from our email to uh, our Facebook Messenger, to our notifications list, to LinkedIn, to you might have more than one email, right? I know there's, I have Gmail and I have my business account, right? And then there's uh, the phone calls and then there's the text messages. And then what about if people are contacting you on WhatsApp or what if someone's contacting you through uh, instant Instagram uh, Messenger? I mean, there's so many different ways that people are reaching out to you uh, and reaching out to your prospects that a lot of us are just overwhelmed with too much stuff coming at us, right? I know some of you guys just joined, and I'd art and thanks for coming. Uh, even if it's late, it's fine. I'm Katrina Sawa. Some of you may not know me. Um, I was just talking about some of the things that are really I see as key things we need to pay attention to as small business owners these days in order to really achieve our dreams. 
And I'm just going to recap quickly because we were talking about the love side of your life. And I was saying that, you know, my starter husband was not supportive when I started a business and that festered into me not being as confident as I wanted to out in, you know, out in the world every day. Um, And it wasn't until I left that marriage and went on my own and really started having faith and confidence in myself that I knew what I was doing. I know that what I'm offering is great for the people that are perfect to work with me. And it was then why I really started attracting a lot more of my ideal clients in that belief in myself, which is when I started writing the books, right? The Love Yourself Successful book. And I started doing events and I started really surrounding myself with those people who were hungry and who wanted more. And if that's you, then you're in the right place because we want, I want you to want more. I think we deserve more. We deserve not only, of course, we all wanna make a bigger impact. Most of us and most of the clients that I work with, including myself, I wanna help so many people, you guys. My big picture goal, I will tell you because I want you to think bigger too about your goals. Mine is like to make so much money that I can put on my own workshops with my own dime, not have to worry about finding sponsors or making people pay ticket prices. I just want to put them on in different cities. I want to do retreats all over the world in different destinations. And I don't, I want to make it very affordable for people to do that. So I need to make a lot of money to make that happen, right? I want to reach a lot more people and I just want to make it easy for people to get what they need and get help and see what they need to do and how to be more so they can grow their own business into multiple six figures or seven. That's my goal. And then I want to have a really amazing lifestyle at home too. And, you know, I'm more of a homebody. I do travel a little bit for conferences and speaking, but I love being home with my family and my dog. Oh my God, dog love. I mean, (laughs) Grace, I know that you know what I mean. (laughs) And, uh, you know, we just love being around friends, family, doing barbecues, wine tasting. I mean, I would be happy just doing that and a few trips a year and helping a lot of people online uh, in a more intimate environment. I'm not one of those people will have like thousands of people on their online trainings, clearly, right? You can see. But the point is that I'm, I'm really more about the focused attention that I can give people. So they get the direct advice on what they need to do every single day or month or whatever to grow their business faster instead of generalizing my advice. Now, by doing that, I've cut my income probably, you know, over the years. I had a coach once that my very first like morphs in more uh, more expensive mentor told me, you need to focus on one thing, right? Have you ever heard that? Where it's like, you need a niche, you need to do one thing. And I'm like, but I can't just do one thing. There's so many things entrepreneurs need. I mean, I did have a video on YouTube that says the 462 things that entrepreneurs need to master because literally there's 462 things, right? We got to wear all these different hats and learn all these different things. Now we don't have to master them all. We have to know enough about each one of those things in order to be able to delegate it, automate it, or systematize it so we can run our business more efficiently and productively. Yes, right? So you don't necessarily have to deep dive on every little thing, which so I see people doing, and I think it's a big mistake. And it's because they just don't know what they don't know, right? But I was told early on, like, pick one thing. Katrina, you should just be the follow-up queen because you have a really great follow-up system. And I'm like, okay, but... But then people don't have anybody to follow up with. They don't get the leads coming in. And then after the follow-up, there's all these other things. I mean, they need automation. And and I just had a hard time limiting the things that I wanted to do. So I don't necessarily put, put that on my clients either. I understand that as entrepreneurs, we have different ideas and we have multiple ideas. And I think it's important to be able to explore those different ideas and or continue evolving along the way, you might think, uh, you know, usually when I have a new client, it's that we say, okay, what are you selling? What do you love to do? What do you, what is, you know, the problem that you want to solve and who's it for and why should they care? Great. Let's do that right now. And then just be open to the evolution of once you start doing that, you might get some other ideas. You might expand your confidence. You might expand your your worth and be able to charge more. Great. Let's just keep tweaking what you're doing 
into the thing that you're still then meant to do. So many people are resistant about changing what they're doing, which I think is is silly. You don't have to be resistant. Just go with your gut as to what you want to do. And then, but get the guidance on how to make that happen and how to make it as profitable and productive as possible. And so that's why some clients work with me for five, 10 years, because there's always more to do. There's always more to implement. And there's always new ideas that we don't necessarily know how to implement. So there's, there's that. So I was talking about how to get in front of more people more often and in more ways, right? So we were talking about getting in front of like a thousand new people every month. How do we do that? Even if only a couple of handfuls are going to pay attention and actually come through our systems or come to a call with us or get our free download or whatever it is, um, how do we get in front of that number of people? It seems exhausting, right? I can't possibly, because think about it. How many times do you put a post on social media and you get nobody saying anything? Maybe sometimes you get like five likes or something like that. There's every once in a while we put something, especially the vulnerable posts or the personal posts or the dog or kid posts. Those are the ones that get all the comments, right? But they don't care sometimes about the business stuff. I get it. Well, social media is not the only thing you want to do. Um, in fact, I do less social media now than I did years ago. And I've been scaling back my social media and being more strategic. So a lot of you probably heard that, you know, if you really want to be successful on social media, run a group well, or run a challenge or something like that. Well, those are good things if you stay the course, if you stay consistent, right? The problem is they'll start, you'll start off consistent, but then you don't keep it going. And that's, that's the mistake. And so then you don't know what to do. And so I, I talk a lot about picking a lane in your marketing. So there's two lanes, I believe, and you want to stick in the lane that is the one that you love most, right? So the, what is that lane? And so the two lanes that I, um, sorry, I'm just muting somebody really quick. Oh, okay. The, the two lanes, one is networking and speaking. The people that like to get out and talk to people, whether it's virtually or in person. Now you can be an extrovert or an introvert to like networking and speaking. And it's more of a leveraged model, right? So you can speak to groups of five people or 25 or 250 people. And you can get in front of more people that way. I think that's a great way. A lot of people are hesitant because they don't know what to speak about. They don't know where to find speaking gigs. And they don't know, they don't have the confidence necessarily to go do the presentation or talk to people in a way that's going to make them want to move. I have had to take all kinds of training around speaking and speaking to sell and speak from stage and sell from stage and all these things and making offers. It's, uh, you know, it's a process and every little piece along the way you do want to learn about for sure. Um, networking. I've been networking since day one. I told you I started my business in 2002 and there was no social media. There was barely websites, right? And so it was all in-person networking, local networking. I had no concept that I would ever have clients all over the world or be doing a book launch like I did yesterday with uh, international bestseller in seven countries. That's just crazy, right? To know that many people in different countries. I don't even know how that happened, but it's amazing how we can do that these days. Um, so networking and speaking is that one lane. The other lane is the online marketing. Some people don't want to talk to people. Some people just want to stay behind the computer, or maybe they only have two to three uh, hours a day to work because they've got small kids or they've got another job or whatever it is, or they just like that uh, interaction. I don't find it as appealing because I like to talk to people and I do want to open this up for questions at the end. So feel free if you got any questions or if you want uh, some quick advice or anything, I'm happy to give that. So I love interacting and I love helping solve problems. I'm a problem solver. I took a quiz one time and that was the number one uh, skill that I had was problem solving. You give me a problem, I'm going to find the answer. I'm going to give you a couple of solutions. Um, so I, I just love, love, love that. Not everybody can do that. Um, but on social media, it's like one way communication. Sometimes I get some comments back and I can, you know, private message people or go deeper with them. And if I pop into some of the other groups that I belong to, right, I can answer people's questions. So I do problem solve in that way. So that really supports my need for problem solving and it helps other people. And a lot of times those people that I answer, like I, I sometimes don't 
um, you know, a lot of people in those groups where someone says, well, how do I do da da da? And a lot of people will say, well, I have a service for that, or I can help you if you want to come to a call or, you know, they're kind of putting people off. I'll answer the thing in like, in like four paragraphs. I'll just answer the question. Here you go. Here's everything you need to know about that. Because I'm all about give first, share always. And I think that the right people, when I do that enough, will come back and say, you know, I want to talk to you now because you just gave me all that great information. I trust that um, you might be someone good to talk to. People trust more when you give more and in that way, right? Now, you don't want to give away the farm all day, every day with everything. Of course, you're not going to make any money. But that's a, an, a, that's a strategy that I use on social media uh, when I take the time to do that. Now, I don't necessarily take the time to do that very often. I probably could do it more, but I love the speaking and networking lane. So throughout the week, I'm on usually one or two podcasts. I'm on four, like four or five networking calls. And I probably have another speaking gig or a webinar or something that I'm doing in one week. I do that. I spend time there instead of trying to wrap my head around what story can I tell, a vulnerable story can I tell on social media to get like 17 comments or whatever. And maybe one of those will raise their hand to talk to me. And because it works. Now it works, but I only spend about 15% of my time on social media and 85% of my time in the other lanes. So think about what lane is really good for you and spend 85% of the time there and maybe 15% in the other lane because it will help you get your reach. But if you're not consistent and you're spending like half time here and half time there or a third of the time here and a third of the time there and a third of the time somewhere else, I mean, you're going to be spread too thin, right? And you don't have to do it all. I Some people will say, well, you have to be on all the platforms. No, you know, I was just listening to a speaker the other day and she said, and she's a social media gal. And she's like, you know what? Just pick one, pick one platform and get rid of the rest and just go deep in that one. Cause there's billions of people in every platform these days. So you really have lots of opportunity if you stay focused, right? So then there's, there's a lot of other ways to market, though. If you haven't thought of, you know, becoming an author, having a book, doing a book launch, people that bought the book are going to go read it. They're going to come to the website from there and you're going to get people in that way. If you haven't thought about doing publicity, I've been on my local TV stations 12 times because of different uh, topics. And it's actually pretty easy to get local publicity. And that's free, right? If you haven't thought about doing direct mail, now I'm not talking about necessarily cold calling, unless I have a client who wanted to talk to people in HR, for example, right? So we could actually find the HR person in each company in either a local area or a certain industry, and we can get the list of people for that. And you can actually do a direct marketing campaign to those ideal prospects, and maybe they're trying to get in and do a training or a speaking Right. So there's a, a process I would put you through to get those things in place that you need. You can't just reach out to those people one time or send them a message on LinkedIn and then hope they respond. You have to have a multi tiered uh, marketing strategy. I call it direct marketing to that kind of an audience. Right. But direct mail, I mean, for follow up. Yeah, I do have a really good follow up system that I've been using before I even started my business and all the jobs that I had because I was meeting a lot of people and I was just at an event. Look, I got business cards on my desk right now. Some of you are only doing in person. I'm telling you, people are hungry at events. If you go in person, you can get a lot of contacts still to this day. It's even better than before COVID because people are really intentional with their relationship building in person. I have, I think, four more conferences to go to before the end of this year. And yes, I'm flying on my dime to do them, but this is where I'm putting most of my lead generation time and, and money for the next couple, you know, the next quarter or two is the online, the in-person stuff. Now, in the beginning, I didn't travel a lot because I didn't have a lot of money, right? So when you don't have a lot of money, then you do other things. And luckily there's Zoom and there's virtual calls these days and they're all over the board. I mean, I, you could literally attend a different networking event probably two to three times a day right now. If you have the right marketing uh, plan and the right audience and you know where your audience is, I could probably point you in the direction of two or three different uh, 
events or networking groups that you could go to virtually if you don't want to travel yet or if you're not able to travel yet, right? Back then when I was started my business and I told my uh, my starter husband that I wanted to go to this workshop in LA. I live in Northern California. It's a plane ride. It's about an hour and a half plane ride. Okay. Um, but the workshop was $3,000 back then. It was a three-day event with a with a gal who is very well known in the entrepreneur mentor space. And But I didn't know who she was at the time. My friend just said, oh, you have to go to this workshop. It's about online marketing. And it was back in 2000 and five, I want to say. And I was like, look, I'm going to go to this workshop. I don't, too bad. I don't, I know we don't have the money, but I'm going to put it on a credit card because I have to go because I have to learn this thing. I know it. Right. And it was the best thing I've, I've ever done. Best thing I ever did was go to this workshop and charge it on my credit card. And I had signed up for her mentorship as well, which was $15,000. I didn't have $15,000, but I trusted in myself that I would, that I knew I was smart enough, I could figure this out. And with that person's help and the group that I was going to be joining, um, within 90 days, I was already making more money than when I started, okay? And I was able to make the payments on the, on the program and I was making enough money that are more, as just as much money as I was prior to going. So, and it just kept increasing after that. And I went to that workshop five times in two and a half years. Five times in two and a half years, it was the same workshop. Okay, same content. Back then, they just kind of did the same thing. Sometimes people still do it today, but it's not. You're not going to keep the marketplace. Uh, you're not going to keep uh, people coming back th these days without new, fresh information. But back then, it was good because we just didn't know what we didn't know, and there was always there was just too much to learn. And so every time I went, I would learn something new, or I would have a new mindset, or I would raise my rates, or all of the above. Right. So I would hear something different every time I went because repetition, you only have capacity for a certain level of information. And then once you grow and expand your mind and your confidence and you go back and listen again, then you're, you're hearing different things. That's just how it happens. And it's been happening for me ever since then for the last 15, 20 years. So I'm telling you, you know, it's it's really good to get. So I'm glad you're here, number one, because some of the stuff that you might have heard before, but maybe you're hearing it a little differently. Maybe when I'm talking about the rates uh, and what to charge, you're like feeling inspired now and going, okay, maybe it is time to raise my rates. I am going to push it up an extra 20 bucks an hour or a hundred bucks an hour. Okay. Back then, I think I went from $59 an hour to $79 an hour. And then I went, to 95 but then i went to that workshop and went from 95 to 250 dollars an hour and then from 250 dollars an hour within a, a year or two i think i went to 500 dollars an hour and now it's more but because my confidence grew and i was seeing what other people were doing well if you can do it and you're making money i can do it you know what i mean so it was like this proof that was i was surrounded by proof and positive people who were uplifting me so I just, I want that for you. Thank you for being here. And I do want to open it up for questions. Um, some of you came in a little late. What what I really want and my goal, a lot of times I talk about the marketing, the sales, the, you know, getting clients and the systems and doing all this stuff. But what it really comes down to is to living your best, happiest life. I mean, that is why I'm in business. I actually had some work done um, with uh, Tim Ferrett, Tim, Tim Kelly. And it was the true purpose work. I don't know if any of you heard of true purpose work, but Tim Kelly and what came out of that was my true purpose was to heal the hearts of women. You guys heal the hearts of women. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm a business coach. What does it have to do with anything? Right. But it, it truly came out of the depths of my soul. And I, I'm saying that I like, I don't usually talk like this. But I am so passionate about women, especially men, important too, don't get me wrong. We need to be fully loved and appreciated. We need to be uh, just love for ourselves, but we need to be loved by those around us. We need that encouragement. I, I just want that for everybody. And I see way too many people selling, uh, settling for unhappy, um, with unhappy people around them and toxic people. I see them settling in jobs they hate. I see people settling and tolerating just toxic environments or just unhappy situations because they think they have to, or they think it's too hard, or they just don't know what else is possible. And I love to show people what else could be possible. 
And by proving that other people are doing it too. And you can too, if you just believe more, believe, believe in yourself more, right? And just, you have to start trusting on some level. I had to trust to leave the start of marriage that it would all work out, that I would make enough money to actually pay for a new house on my own by myself, right? Which I did for 12 years. I paid for this house on my own by myself with no help whatsoever. Um, I did that, right? Because I believed and I trusted it would all work out. And I just kept this focused uh, action towards what I really wanted and the dreams. And I, you know, yeah, I had bad days. Yeah, I sat on the couch every once in a while watching Oprah eating ice cream because I was like scared, right? I've done it. I've been scared. I'm still scared every once in a while. And I go to my husband now, who's my keeper husband. He's amazing, right? I go to him and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. And he'll say, of course you can. And he'll usually throw something back that I say to my clients in my face because he he hears it by osmosis, right? So he usually throws back some kind of saying back in my face. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I can snap out of it pretty quickly now, but I still get there, right? We all do. I just want you to be happier, and in order to have a really happy life, I think we deserve to have vacations. We deserve to have nice things. We deserve to have a nice house, a nice car, a dog if we want it, which, you know, costs money. And uh, whatever it is you, your heart desires, maybe you want to travel more. I have a lot of, I have a couple clients who want to live in an RV full time and travel all over the place and then, and then go to different countries. Well, money, it, we need money for that, right? So we have to really want and see how important it is to make more money, right? And how to up-level our own skills and confidence in order to do that. Because money will provide a happier life. We can be happy, but do you really wanna be eating top ramen without vacations every year? That's not necessarily as happy. I wanna be to where it doesn't, whatever I want, I can just pay for it, you know? I'm not quite there yet, honestly. I need to get to a half a million, you know? My big hairy goal for the next 12 months is a half a million, right? What's your goal? What's your goal? Because there's always more, right? And we deserve it. And I want you to have it. And if there's any problem I can solve for you or any direction I can give you to help make it easier, faster, more fun, um, and just more successful, that's what I want to do. That's why I'm here. That's why I do these calls. I don't care if there's two people here, 20 people there. It doesn't matter. If you're still sticking it out, there's something that we're talking about that you might want help with. And so I would love to uh, open it up for questions. I do have an opportunity for you to do a call with me if, uh, if anybody's interested in diving in with one thing or something. Like I do a 90 minute call as a, for a new client for 350 bucks, you guys. That's way less than even an hour of my time. And it's 90 minutes with me. We can do deep dive on whatever it is that you think is the most important thing. Or I can ask you a few questions and I can figure out what the most important thing is on that call. And we can dive in on what that is. It could be it could be your social media. It could be your website stuff. It could be your confidence. It could be talking about how to be more productive. It could be more consistent marketing. I don't know. I do that all. I do it all. Okay. I do it all because I have to do it all myself and not myself. I have a team, but like, I have to do it in my company too. So I know a lot about a lot. I'm very broad in my scope of what I can do with people and I just want to help you live that happier life with a lot more love and a lot more money. And that's why I'm here. So if you're interested in that, I'll put the link in the chat in a second, but I'd love to open it up for questions. Does anybody have anything? You can unmute. Thanks for being Hi, on Katrina. Time. I do have a question. So um, it was great hearing that we don't have to do every single social media. I just was wondering is like most of us are probably in everything, but like me, I don't participate in everything yeah. and I have the ones that I like and I have the ones that I would like to have go away, but <laughs> I know that's not possible. So what exactly do we do with those, the ones that we're not going to be in? 
Well, or maybe just have question. a presence, but not, yes. not be active, be active. So a couple different options. Of course, you don't want to um, just leave it hanging, right? If you already have a presence, I would figure out some level of automation on that one and you focus on the one. So if you like Facebook, for example, which is the one you like actually, Grace, which one? And you're muted. You muted yourself. Stop. You muted yourself. <laughs> I I like my blog and I just switched over to Facebook biz rather than Facebook regular. And I like that better. I don't like the personal uh, Facebook because it seems to be, I mean, not that I don't like the people on it. I love them, but it's just, it's too much of a time suck. And I'm finding that um, that's probably my, my, my favorite of the two. Okay. Well, um, so LinkedIn, I don't do anything on, and I know that's something I should do something on. Um, probably just need it sorry. kind of like on autopilot. Not necessarily. Um, I personally think um, that Facebook business is not necessarily uh, the most productive place to focus. However, I know you like it better and which is, I get okay. it, but the Facebook personal is where you can connect and you don't have to can do all the things necessarily, but mm -hmm. um, the reason why people join Facebook is so they can connect with people and become friends, right? So Facebook business is more like, posting, 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 leaving, you're not connecting because you can't make okay. friends as a business, right? So you aren't connecting. I get that's what you like about it. So that tells me that social media isn't your lane, right? Well, that was also interesting. I don't even know how I started on the business is because I think something came up and said, um, you should be on Facebook business rather than Facebook regular. <laughs> well, so okay, you know, so you the, toggle back and forth. The good things about Facebook business is that it's search engine friendly. Okay. So you want to have stuff on, on Facebook business because when people do a search for keywords or your name even, or professional organizer in the Bay area, um, hopefully your Facebook will come up. Okay, but that you so your personal doesn't come up in search engines usually. It's usually the business that comes up more so. Mm -hmm. That's so that's the good thing about Facebook business is the search engine optimization that they put in there. Um, <clears throat> but I don't know. I've been on it since two thousand eight, right? I've been on Facebook mm -hmm. since two thousand eight since it started, and I get way more play off my personal than I do anything off the business. Um, people want it's just more of a personal place to play. If you want to play so business uh, mostly, then LinkedIn okay. is probably more of a business place, but you also like, I think Pinterest or Instagram, right? Don't you? Yeah. Know? I like Pinterest mm -hmm. and Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> so if you like some of these, I know you're not a big networker and speaker. So, I mean, I think it's good to play on some of these. I don't know if I would limit it to one for you and make it Facebook business. I don't think it's going to be as productive. I think Hiring a social media person to do some of the posting on the ones that aren't as productive where you don't like to hang out. I think hang, you have a group on Facebook too. I think you should focus on the group. I think you should get the friends people over into the group and just constantly be funneling people into the group and stay in the group and post okay. stuff and do videos and stay in the group before the page. The group is going to be more interactive. Um, you can do challenges, you can do contests, you can do polls, you can do befores and afters, you can do all kinds of stuff in your group to make more engagement. Yeah. I like the group. So that's great. Yeah. So I am, um, as far as all the other sites, I, you know, you don't, if you're not, I know you're on LinkedIn, I think, but if you're not really there that much, it might be something to automate a little bit. Um, okay. You know, I started a business page over on LinkedIn too but I don't do a lot with it. My VA pretty much just posts on the social or on the personal stuff. So. Okay. So automate this will kind of update and automate the ones that you're not as active in. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't okay. just leave them. Um, but somebody could do two posts a week over there and, mm -hmm. um, you know, 
for a very little amount of time or investment and you could still stay active, so to speak. So that, you know, it just depends where you want to go with it. Okay. That was helpful. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anybody else have any other questions? Hi, Paige. <laughs> nice to see you. All right. So I just wanted to, um, I know a couple people dropped off. Maybe they didn't have any questions. That's fine. Uh, if anybody was interested in my um, retreat in Northern uh, North Carolina, Charlotte, we're having that in October. So um, that is a great place to come. If you want like a three-day deep dive mastermind with me and a very small group of people, uh, that is a great place to go. It's the only one I'm doing this fall. Um, and it's uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina in October. And so that's on the event page of the website. If anybody's interested, um, I put the link to the event site in the chat. And I would love to see you there. And then I do these webinars. They're always different once a month. So you want to go to the Jumpstart Events page and get on the next one if you're interested. I'm going to be changing up the topic a little bit for September and October. Um, and uh, yeah, you're welcome back. Uh, I'd love to have you. If there aren't any more questions, I'm happy to, to end early and give you seven minutes back to your day. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Thanks very much, everyone.